27. I'm going to read it out. Are we all feeling good? Yes. yes. All right. All right. Are we good to read? One, awesome. What was it? One Corinthians. One oh. Corinthians. Twelve. <laughs> Verses 12 to 27. How do you get the thing? So page 1151. I don't have a few Bible. Because I've just realised my translation is going to be a little different to yours. That's good. That's good. But uh, we'll forgive you. My Bible's the simple person who doesn't do well with big words. Um, okay. From verse 12 it says. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. This is the same with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves and some are free. But we all have been baptised into one body by one spirit, and we shall share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says... Well, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand. <laughs> that does not make it any less. <laughs> Don't remember that. Part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Optometrists would do well, though. It doesn't say that. <laughs> um, or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? That's an interesting thought. But our bodies have many parts. And God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honourable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen. While the more honourable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honour and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honoured, all the parts are glad. Now here comes verse 27, which is my key verse. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. Back to my notes. Okay, so I remember back at school, uh, it wasn't... It was a fair while ago for me, but some of you is not that long ago, I see, so that's good um, <laughs> for the majority. That's great. Um, <laughs> that's making me feel old. Um, so we used to play soccer, and, um, and at the start of the game, you'd all line up, select two captains, and they were usually the two coolest or sportiest kids, and... Then it started the dreaded one by one process of I'll take you, I'll take you. Wasn't very fun for someone like me, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> um, I wasn't very good at soccer, so I was always one of the ones to get picked last. And it was pretty embarrassing to get picked, uh, to get picked last. Um, it didn't exactly do lots for your self-esteem and you certainly didn't feel equal. In fact, if the soccer team was a human body, I felt as though I was equivalent to the bacteria growing under one of my fingernails. <laughs> so, everyone say, ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that piece of good bacteria under the fingernail that's fighting the bad bacteria, bacteria doing any less of a job than what the eye is doing. Yeah. Let's say maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if it is, 
Okay. I've got a story for you, this actually. <laughs> story about eyes and bacteria. I work with a guy called Barbs. He comes to work on Tuesday and his eyes look pretty normal. <laughs> and we get to about lunchtime and he comes in and he's been on the track to spreading the fertilizer. And I look at one of his eyes and it's swollen up and red. Looks irritated like he's got a bug in it. <laughs> oh, oh man, that eye doesn't look good. Anyway, so lunch goes by. I didn't hear too much of it. And Bubs gives me a call. He's on the track to spreading fertilizer and it's broken down. He's got a full load of fertilizer in, several tons, and he goes, oh, it's broken. you will have to come with a shovel and shovel it out. I'm like, oh, okay. So me being the servant I am, I get a shovel and I go, and start, I'm waist deep in poo and I'm, sho and I'm shoveling it out so we can fix the machine. Meanwhile, I look up and see Barbs' eye. It is now red and pussy and looks disgusting. And I say, what is wrong with your eye? He goes, he goes to me, oh, I think I've got conjunctivitis. I'm like, I think you've got more than that. <laughs> so anyway, um, we'll go back now. But, but what I'm trying to say is, um, Like, his eye wasn't doing a very good job at fighting the bacteria. Mm -hmm. well, now, is that bacteria under my fingernail any good at reading words for us? No. no. It's not working, is it? <laughs> so, <laughs> where am I up to? My goodness. Now... Like, I'm not exactly a germ looker at her up. That's another word, that's a technical word for microbiologist, but um, they'd be able to tell you <laughs> right now that that bacteria is doing a very important job. Is that true? Yes. That's true. And, that, and they would probably say it's equal to your eyesight. Mm -hmm. We could probably pick up some. Dirty, dirty, oh, I almost turned it off. Dirty disease, if it wasn't for the good bacteria fighting the bad bacteria. Mm. True. Mm. Now, if God has made me and you, all of us, a certain part of the body of Christ, does that mean I'll only ever be what, I, what God has created me to be? Firstly, let's look at the importance of what you are now. Now, I want to stress that we as the body of Christ um, aren't just confined on a Sunday morning to these walls. When you ask Jesus to be Lord and Saviour of your life, you become a permanent part of his body. That means that in everything you do, from this point onwards, in, or from that point onwards in your life, you do it as part of the body of Christ. From this point on, it's not about us as individuals, but rather we realise it's about Jesus. As humans, we are all about status, what we can gain, what possessions we'll end up with, where we'll be ten years down the track. Um, but when we join the body of Christ, we are no, look at, no longer looking to please the lusts of the flesh, but rather our eyes are now opened to the big picture and we, are set, and we see that we are called to build the kingdom of God. Mm. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that's good. <laughs> now, if, if you're sitting here and thinking, well, that's good. I know we're all part of, the, uh, part of the body of Christ, but I don't know what I am. I must just be the appendix. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I can tell you today, you do have a purpose. And if you don't know what that is, or, or you feel you don't know what that is, start praying, start spending time with God, and He will soon show up to you. you know? like, it could be many things, you know? it could be serving people in the community. 
It might be teaching scripture up at the school once a week. It might be being part of the music team. We've got one today. That's great. <laughs> it might be the fact that you have come to church this morning to be part of the congregation. You are still part of the body of Christ. Yes. Without the congregation, we have no church. <laughs> it's <a> pretty important. <laughs> You see, because now we're part of something greater than what we could ever achieve on our own. And because we've thrown off our human desires, it doesn't matter what function we are in the body of Christ, like what what it what our the part we are, what it functions as, rather. We're all equally important. I wrote something down that I'm not going to say because I don't like it anymore. Um, so I think this is going to roll into my next point, even if I leave out the last bit. Uh, so while we are all called to be a part of the body of Christ, we are all disciples and because of this we are called to go out into the nation and make disciples um, now this is a pretty scary thought really I'm going to read Matthew 28 the 18 to 19 you guys don't have to look it up I'll just find it quickly um, and it says Jesus came and told his disciples I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Are you keeping up with me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good, 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 good. Um, so if we are part of the body of Christ, Jesus commands us to go out and make disciples. I, I, I want to really... Push on this, you know. He's telling you, go out and make disciples. So we, so we have a, we have a responsibility to uphold. Anybody who's not yet heard about Jesus or has not made the decision to follow Christ is both a neighbour to us, but they're also an enemy of God. Um, I'm not just when I refer to the neighbour because I'm going to refer to neighbour a bit a neighbour can be anyone it can be a brother it can be that person down the road that person we see all the time you know. but when we go out into our nation we live in the nation of Australia but where we live the majority of the time is in Bendemir and we all know that there's people in Bendemir that aren't right with God um And have you ever thought to yourself, maybe I'm the only one who can share Jesus with that person? Mm. Maybe I'm the only chance they're ever going to get to to be the difference for them going to hell for eternity or spending eternity with Jesus. It's good, yeah. Some of us are probably thinking, yeah, well, my neighbour deserves to go to hell. <laughs> 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 we'll a neighbour like that, true. <laughs> but thankfully, that's not for us to judge. As in God's eyes, we're all sinners and we're all equal. He sent his son to die for all of us. Not, that, not just those who behave the majority of the time. Not just those who do good deeds. Not just those who go to church on a Sunday morning, but for all of us, no one is too evil for God. Yeah. Isn't that great? Like, mm. like we're saved by grace and grace only, not yes. good deeds. Yeah. Mm. Pretty amazing, I reckon. So if we are called to share with our neighbours about the good news of Jesus, why is it so difficult for us to do? Like it seems as though the task is mammoth. It feels huge. 